Welcome, hipsters, hepcats, and all you cool chicks out there. Welcome to Offbeat Cinema. Have we got a movie for you tonight? I don't know, Zelda. Do we? Why, yes, of course, Bird. That was a rhetorical question. Rhetorical? Does that mean it's got subtitles? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we do have one far gone flick tonight. Look, Zelda, I'm, I'm dying of suspense here. What's the title? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, as you know, we often deal with troubled youth and teens with problems. And we have had teenage cavemen, teenage zombies, teenage werewolves, and tonight we have teenagers from outer space. <laughs> you know, Zelda, I really don't care where they come from, be it time or space. These kids all have one thing in common. It's the man. And society is trying to hold them down. You dig it, baby? I dig. I dig. I so dig. And cats, you are going to dig this far gone, fun, <laughs> cheesy flick, Teenagers from Outer Space. We, we do love it here on Offbeat Cinema, you know, because it, it tells the tale of an alien invasion of Earth. You know, we got that part. And uh, they show up with their uh, giant Gorgons who look suspiciously like lobsters. <laughs> but there's also a rebellious teen and he's in to peace, love, and understanding, man. Well, what's so funny about that? Funny indeed, Zala. You know, this is a, a, a cool little flick. It has its own vibe, and I like it. I like it, too. And it has this lovable ineptness. And, uh, you know, isn't it time that Theodore popped in to share some of his insights? Well, we never quite know when he's just going to pop in, know. but... It just may happen. Oh, Zelda. <laughs> Zelda is never wrong. You know, cats, back in 1959, when this film first debuted, a lot like now, teenagers were large and in charge. They were, they were running the show. And we had the uh, teenage biker rebellion, we had the teenage gangs, and we had all the teenage monsters that Zelda was talking about earlier. So it was only a matter of time until there were teenagers from outer space. I mean, we do tell you to keep watching the skies for a reason, you know. So tonight, you've got the soft-hearted golden boy from outer space who descends from the heavens and falls for the pretty Earth girl. I mean, cats, this is... This is Romeo and Juliet from the stars. Shakespeare would have dug this film. Totally, totally. Now, our lead is played by the appropriately named David Love. And he falls for the Earth Girl. And so you do have this Romeo and Juliet vibe to the whole show. Now, keep in mind that the, um, uh, the blasters, the space shooters that you're going to see, were obtained from the local Woolworth, and uh, although at the time that's all the budget uh, they could afford, now if you can find one of those guns, you really got something. You really got something. And of course, their big scene is that when they shoot you, you turn into a skeleton. So skeletons are popping left and right. Even poor Fido, the dog, watch for this scene early in the film. Poor Fido gets turned into a skeleton. So. Although there are parents out there who would say that all teenagers are from outer space. I'm going to get into that. Tonight, we have the real deal. We have the teenagers from outer space here on Offbeat Cinema. And there you have it. And there you heard it. Teenagers from outer space. And we have guests coming in and mail to read and so much more. So get ready, cats. Pop a big bowl of corn and D.I.G. dig this flick. Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm -hmm, so good. 
We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. Dr. Mason, Dr. Mason. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I guess it was nothing. A sudden light reflection, it startled me. There's no doubt a comet or a meteor. No, it, it seemed to be a, a drill-shaped thing, revolving. No, it, it must have been my imagination. It makes me realize how desperately alone the Earth is. Hanging in space like a speck of food floating in the ocean. Sooner or later to be swallowed up by some creature floating by. Oh, come now. Time will tell, Dr. Mason. We can only wait and wonder. Wonder how. Wonder when.
report preliminary findings. Thor reporting. 42 saturation degrees in 96 volumes. Intermediate fluctuation in Marfan content. Derek reporting. Tridex mixer components ratio exceeding 7 to 1.4. More reporting. Diagonal adjustment reading resisting structural forms by 2.8.0 vernums. Saw reporting. Uneven cartoid levels intersect planes below 0.03. Surface readings register above minimum requirements. Morrow, go below and bring up the young Gargan specimen. Now the decision depends on its reactions. Wait, Captain. I have found evidence of intelligent beings on this planet. Of what concern are foreign beings? Of none to you, Thor. Just as you were so unconcerned when you destroyed this small creature. So bravely. It was no more than an insect. But it had life. And that life you had to take to satisfy your endless hunger for killing. Silence, both of you. Proceed, bring the Gargan. That will not be necessary, Captain. Conditions here will be reported as unsatisfactory, as they were on the other planets we have charted. By what authority? You will prepare for takeoff. The ship will leave this planet immediately. According to our code of operations... You may forget the code of operations, Captain. Only civilized beings could have made the inscription on this metal piece. We shall not have the thousands of Gargans brought here to destroy them. You have concern for foreign beings over our mission to locate grazing land for our Gargan herds? Recall, it is necessary as a reserve food supply for our people. Our people? We live like parts of a machine. We don't know our fathers or mothers were raised in cubicles. The sick and the old are put to death. It is the one and only way to maintain the supreme race. Have you forgotten? That? Our people have forgotten. They have been made to forget for centuries. But I have learned how it once was. Families, brothers and sisters, there was happiness, there was love. Of what do you speak? From where have you learned such things? I have read. I have read from this book. I discovered it and kept it hidden. Somehow it survived the flames of the Annihilators when our people were turned into mechanized slaves centuries ago. When we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture and death for this treason. The High Court may judge me after we have accomplished our mission. We will find an uninhabited planet to which the herds of Gargans may be shipped without endangering civilized beings. Let me see that book. I am interested to see what sways your mind so heavily. You may have it. <coughs> Bring up the Gargan. You are a fool, Derek. This book has poisoned your mind, and you shall suffer for it. Captain, if the Gargans are shipped here, the inhabitants may destroy them. That possibility alone makes it worthwhile to locate an uninhabited planet. That book has indeed made you forget many things. We are the supreme race. We have the supreme weapons. Keep him under guard, Thor. I will study the reactions of the young Gargan. Before the High Court has you executed, you should be made to watch what happens when we return here with the Gargans. By the elements alone, they will grow to millions of times their original size in less time than it takes for the sun to rise and fall. It thrives, Captain. Already I can feel it has grown heavier. We shall return to our base and lead the transport ships here. Soon, this planet will be covered with full-grown Gargans. A safe distance from our planet, yet their meat will be available to us for the harvesting. Repack the instruments. I shall radio back the news of our success. Captain! Captain, something has gone wrong. 
Look here. What? What has happened? I do not know. It suddenly fell limp and now does not move. Assemble the t hook hooking the gas grating instruments. Be quick! The atmosphere here tested above minimum but the gargan species cannot live due to excessive nitrogenic gas compounds emitted in our preliminary diagnosis. Then this planet will be reported as unsuitable? Repack the instruments and prepare for takeoff. We will continue our search in another solar system. And when we return to our home base, you will be presented to the High Court with the evidence against you. Thor, solve. Find the prisoner and prepare him for the isolation chamber. I will make contact with base. Expedition Z06 to base. Expedition Z06 to base. Guard him. I will get the straps. Lie down. Put your hands behind you. Escape from Saul. I could have stopped him. Derek is to be brought back alive. He is the son of our leader. Derek? I reported his actions and was connected with the leader himself. He told me this. He said Derek does not know. As the son of our leader, the High Court will pardon him. He will be pardoned. When the sky is light, we will begin to search for him. Captain, look at this. The Gargan. It is not dead. It has revived. It flourishes. The excessive nitrogenic gas compound shocked its system. Now it thrives on the very same compounds. Then this planet is suitable. Completely. I must resume radio vision contact. Morrow, Sol, secure the Gargan by expandable leg bands. Out of sight in that cave. The size it attains by the time we return will give us an exact growth rate to expect of the herds. At the rate the Gargon is expected to grow, what will prevent it from tearing loose the leg bands and escaping from the cave? We shall be back before that happens, unless it should receive food in excess of the atmospheric elements. We will leave nothing else for it to consume. Imagine thousands of beasts like that. Millions of times enlarged, roaming over this planet. They will be harvested from the air, so there will be no danger to us. Let us be quick. I do not like to look upon it. Now that you report the planet is suitable for our purposes, you are to return here immediately and prepare to lead the transport ships there. Derek's escape could now mean difficulty in our operation should he communicate in any way with the inhabitants, inferior though they may be. If we are to return now, how can he be stopped? Leave your best man to find Derek and inform him he is my son. I will join you on the return trip to meet him there. He may be stubborn. He has already threatened our lives. If that becomes the case, he... he must be destroyed. And any beings with whom he might communicate, they must be destroyed. Your orders are complete. 
I shall send my best man. I heard the orders, Captain. Let me find Derek. You will wait until the sky is light enough to begin the search. We will leave now and return here to meet you when we bring the Gargans. Not fail for I shall not fail. Mighty Taco. What is Terrapin Station? Station? Well, it's for the living, for the living. and the dead. the dead. It's a unique boutique, boutique for the normal and the not so normal. So, Terrapin Station, Buffalo's most exciting specialty shop, offers you candles, candles imported clothing, clothing jewelry, jewelry, books, books posters, posters, music, music and more. more. So stop in and say hi at Terrapin, Terrapin Station, Station, 1172 Pearl. So stop in and say hi. Poster art. New, old, and rare posters. Art postcards, custom framing, and more. 1055 Elmwood Avenue. Looking for a certain poster? Call us or go to posterartusa.com. I'm Tori Spelling. As a wife, mother, actress, it is tough finding balance, but I did find clarity with Psychic Source. A reading from one of their advisors gives me an unbiased perspective on everything. With hundreds of carefully screened advisors, you choose the one that's right for you. My hope is that when we hang up, that you'll have a peace and an understanding that you didn't have before. Call now for your special introductory rate of 75 cents per minute by phone or chat. The best psychics are waiting to help you find answers and insights 24 seven. And if you're not completely satisfied, your reading is free. Why not empower yourself with the possibilities in your life? Call 1-800-574-6281 now. That's 1-800-574-6281 for your special rate of 75 cents per minute. Psychic Source, life's possibilities revealed. Call 1-800-574-6281 now for your special rate of 75 cents per minute. Sir. Yes, I would. Would you tell me the meaning of the inscription on this metal piece? Sparky, 1243 Willowcrest Drive. That's just three blocks down there and a few doors up. You can't miss it. Hey, what's what you're doing now? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just trying to make out what kind of clothes that guy was wearing. Looks like some kind of military uniform. Wonder where he's from. Could be from Mars, for all I care. Hurry up that boy, will ya? I haven't got all day. Up 
in. I'll give you a lift. Lift? Well, it's a long way into town. Okay, it's all right with me. Wait. Never saw a uniform like that before. What brings you here? I am searching for someone. Maybe I can help you. you. Know a lot of folks around these parts. I am searching for someone you could not know. Breakfast out 20 minutes ago, Grandpa, and it's still here. He's probably still out chasing gophers. Hello. You've come to see our room for rent? What's that? A fellow to see the room for rent, Grandpa. You show it to him, will you? Joe will be by for me in a minute. We're going swimming at Alice's, and I haven't even changed yet. Well, come on in. I'm Betty Morgan, and this is my grandfather. Now, how do you do, son? Uh, just arrived in town? Don't believe I've seen you around before. I just arrived. And your name? Derek. Derek. The empty room belonged to my brother, Bud. He's married now and lives upstate. Your brother? You knew your brother? Did I know my brother? That's a strange question to ask. Grandpa raised us both since we were kids after Mom and Dad died. I'm sorry. I. It's just that I never knew any brothers or sisters. <laughs> Your mother and father decided to play it smart and avoid a lot of squabbles around the house. Oh, Grandpa. <laughs> I never knew my mother or father. Oh. Well, let's take a look at the room, and if you like it, you're welcome to stay. It's this way. I'll show it to you. Hey, I thought you were getting ready to go swimming. No, that can wait. Right in here, Derek. I hope you like the view. There are plenty of windows. <laughs> hey, what's going on in town anyway, mister? A convention or something? What? Well, those clothes you're wearing. I talked to a guy this morning who was wearing the same kind of outfit. Maybe the guy you're looking for, huh? You spoke to him? What did he tell you? Where did he go? Hey, what's the matter with you? Hey, take your hands off me. You will tell me what he said to you. Oh, why should I? Hey, who do you think you are, anyway? Answer me, or I destroy you. He came here with a dog tag. Wanted to know about the address, and I told him how to find it. Where? Where did you send him? It was an address on Willow Crest Drive. 1243, I think. Tell me how to get there. Just drive down there about three blocks. That's, that's Willow Crest. 1243, it's only a few doors up. <laughs> Break on so hard, Derek. That is, unless you want us to go through the windshield every time. I have never piloted a vehicle like this before. I will try again. Uh, this time, pull in there. That's Alice's house. Oh, much better. Wait, Betty. Yes, Derek? What is it? When I came to your place, it was because of Yes? I had just arrived here. I, I did not know where else to go, but everything was so strange to me. I... I'm glad you came. So is Grandpa. Without any family or friends, you wouldn't like it at a hotel or any place like that. Come on. I hope Alice can dig up some swim trunks for you. Hi there. 
welcome is the stranger. Uh, Joe couldn't make it, Alice. I talked Derek into coming along. Uh, Derek, this is Alice. Derek! Hey, I like that. Come on in. The water's fine. Well, we need a pair of swim trunks. I couldn't find any at my house. No problem at all. He can wear a pair of my father's. The folks are gone today, and so are the servants. We have the whole place to ourselves. Uh, where are the trunks, Alice? Hanging up, right over there. They look a little large for you, Derek. Or maybe you better put them on with some clothespins, too, just in case. I guess it's safe to try them on anyway. Over there at the bathhouse. <coughs> what was that? Don't worry, I'll get it. That is what I wanted to tell you about. The reason I came to your place, when I did not know where else to go. Heck, I thought it was a 50 cent piece at least. Why, that looks like who it is. It's Sparky's. Sparky's dog tag. Oh, where on earth did you find it? When I first arrived, I was with some others. One of them destroyed a small creature. Later, I found that among the remains. You mean somebody killed Sparky? Oh, no, Derek, it can't be true. Why would anyone want to kill Sparky? Betty, I'm sorry. Tell me who did it, Derek. They are gone now. Only I remained. But I don't understand. Where is Sparky? Will you take me to where it happened? I'll get dressed and come with you. No, Alice, please. You stay here. We'll see you later. Well, well, so Derek didn't come into town alone. If you're looking for him, he isn't here now. He and Betty, uh, that's my granddaughter, they went over to the Woodward's. Why don't you go on over there? No doubt they'd be glad to have you joined in the fun. Yes. How do I go there? The Woodwards are straight on down the street, about three miles, just before you get to the park. Got the biggest house in the block down there. You can't miss it. Where are you fellas from, anyway? Don't believe I've seen uniforms like yours before. Hmm, military secret, eh? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Derek didn't say where he's from, either. Don't let me keep you. You're probably anxious to see him. Where is he, Derek? You don't mean those old bones. You can see they've been here for a very long time. No. It was among these remains that I found the metal inscription. But this couldn't be Sparky. I know. He must have been here and his collar tag fell off. That's all. You are not familiar with the focusing disintegrator ray? The what? It projects an isolated beam which separates the molecules of living material in chain reaction. All but the solids, the skeletal braces. Horrible. And you mean Sparky? But... Over there is what happened when the same beam was aimed at me. It missed and that is what is left. Good heavens, Derek. You've got to explain it to me. Why were they doing this? Where were they from? How did you... We... Betty, tell me. What is the most advanced form of transportation that you know? What do you mean? What's that got to do with it? Please, tell me, Betty. Well, airplanes. Jet airplanes, I guess. Why? And where do they go? From where to where? To anywhere in the world. And... That's all. Where else is there to go? I should not have brought you here. Is it about a new secret weapon? Something you and the others invented and then they turned against you? It, 
It is something like that. I guess I should try to find someone I can explain it to. Maybe Professor Simpson at the college. He's head of the science department. He will... What is it, Derek? Betty, when you learn where I'm from, well, you may not understand, but I hope it will not make any difference between us, because... I don't care where you're from. I don't understand all this, but somehow I feel that I've always known you. That we've never been apart. I... Let us go to the professor you speak of. We have to pass the house first so I can change. What was that? Did you hear a sound? No. Only the wind. What sort of sound? Nothing. My imagination alarmed me. Come, let us be on our way. Well, hello. What can I do for you? You are alone? Could be. Where are the others? The ones who are with you? Why do you want to know that? Tell me where they are. Say, who are you anyway? Never mind. Just tell me. Well, they left here. They're gone. Where did they go? I think you better get out of here before I call the police. You will call no one. You will do as I say. That's what you think, mister. I said you will call no one. Welcome back to Offbeat Cinema. And we hope all you cats and kittens out there in the dark are enjoying tonight's film, Teenagers from Outer Space. You know, it's funny. It, clearly, no matter how far out in whatever galaxy you come from, teenagers are always estranged from their fathers, and they're always rebelling against establishment. And there's it's a cool chick to help. Yes, there is a cool chick, and you know, this is possibly the only flick where this cool chick can say that her boyfriend is out of this world and really mean it. Cats, you will only find a movie like Teenagers from Outer Space right here on Offbeat Cinema. So, let's get back to it, shall we? Joe, Betty there? No, so she and Derek went out over to the Woodward's pool. Uh, you could probably reach her over there. Derek? Who's Derek? Oh, you haven't met him yet, have you? Uh, he rented Bud's old room this morning. Seems like a nice fellow. Oh? Well, the reason I called, I wanted to tell Betty I stumbled onto a double murder story that may keep me longer, but... Well, after I get the story into the paper, I'll, I'll go on over to Alice's and see her there. A double murder, Joe? When was it? Where? We're not sure yet, Gramps. There's only a couple of skeletons. We'll know more when the coroner gets here. We're gonna get busy now, Gramps. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Joe! Joe, I just found a note. Joe! Hello, hello. My golly, you missed them at the pool, huh? Sure am sorry. Uh, Betty left me a note. Now they've gone over to the college to see Professor Simpson. Hello. Where can we find Professor? 
Mr. Simpson? This is his office, but he hasn't come in yet. Well, let's wait for him at the faculty parking lot. It's just around the building. You may wait here if you like. No, thank you. We'll wait outside. Good morning, Hilda. Oh, good morning, Professor Simpson. Have the aptitude questionnaires come in? They're probably still in mimeographing. I'll go down and see if they're ready. Uh, that's Professor Simpson's office. The third door down. Uh, he's head of the science department. Well, that looks like Professor Simpson's car right there. He must be somewhere else on campus. We better go back to his office and wait. Hello? This is Simpson, science department. I put that down. What is the meaning of this? Do as I say. Who are you? Where is he? The one who came with information for you. Who? You are making some mistake. I am making no mistake. Where did he go? Out there? I don't know what you're talking about. You will speak to no one else. came in right after you left. Ah! Oh! oh, Derek. Oh, it's some kind of foolish joke. I'm not going to keep a job where this sort of thing goes on. I want to believe what I'm thinking isn't true, but... It was a focusing disintegrator. Then... Whoever killed Sparky... But you said they'd gone. For some reason, they want to stop me. Somehow, we were traced here. I want you to get in your vehicle and go to a place where you will be safe. But how could they... Grandpa. I left a note for Grandpa. They must have... Oh, Derek. I will go to your place. No, they may be waiting for you there. I can call Grandpa. Thank heavens. Derek, he's all right. Betty, what is it, child? What's the matter? Grandpa, was somebody there? Somebody you told we were at the college? Oh, yes, a friend of Derek's. Uh, did he find you okay? He's a murderer. He killed Professor Simpson, Grandpa. He's after Derek, and he's probably on the way back to the house right now. A murderer? But uh, are the police... Don't argue, Grandpa. Just get out of there. We're going to the City Hall Police Station right now. Meet us there. Don't worry about me, Betty. I'll leave right away. Goodbye, honey. Yeah, better call the police and let them know we're coming. With what weapons are they equipped? With guns. Why? Guns that emit what? Bullets. What do you mean? Bullets. Centuries old invention against... Hello, operator. Give me the police department. Hurry. <laughs> Betty, tell me how to go there. I want you to go somewhere else where you will be safe. We're safer than the city hall. The police said they're going to have armed guards waiting for us on the front steps. I told them we'd be right there. Let's hurry. My granddaughter, you're not getting any help from me. Did they return here? Tell me. 
I have no reason to harm your granddaughter. But if you do not tell me, so I'll... you can kill Derek? Why should you care about him? Why shouldn't I? Why do you want to kill him? I... It is important only that he leave here, that I return him to where he belongs. And where is that? From where he escaped. I need not harm anyone if you tell me where he is. If you do not, there will be many deaths. Beginning with you, now. He's not here, he's... in the center of the city. Where? Take me there. You will pilot the vehicle. Go! Be swift! Mighty Taco. What is Terrapin, Terrapin Station? Station? Well, it's for the living, the living. and the dead. the dead. It's a unique boutique, boutique for the normal and the not so normal. So, Terrapin Station, Buffalo's most exciting specialty, specialty shop, offers you candles, candles imported clothing, clothing, jewelry, jewelry books, 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 posters, posters music, music, and more. So stop in and say hi at Terrapin, Terrapin Station, Station, 1172 Pearl. So stop in and say hi. Attention women. Recent reports have linked the use of talcum powder with an increased risk of ovarian cancer. Studies have shown that talc particles can travel up the reproductive system and attach to the ovaries, which could cause ovarian cancer. Talc is a mineral that, when used as a powder, absorbs moisture and minimizes friction. Many women have used talc in the forms of shower-to-shower -shower or other body powders. If you or a loved one have used talcum powder and were diagnosed with ovarian cancer, you may be entitled to financial compensation and medical expenses. Call the Relyon Group right now to be connected with an experienced attorney for a free consultation. There is no risk on your part, and you don't owe us a penny unless we are successful. Do not delay. There are time deadlines to file a claim. If you or a loved one were diagnosed with ovarian cancer after using talcum powder, call the Relyon Group at 800-906-0352. That's 800-906-0352.
He must have slipped off that way. Come on. Stay undercover. What are you doing down here? Go into the building. That is the safest place. Betty, go into the building. Derek! <gasps> Give me the weapon you have, Derek. Slowly. One sudden move and I slay you both. Derek? What Derek do as he says? Get in! Take me to a man of surgery to remove the metal pellets from my flesh. That is not possible. Yes, we must. We must do as he says. I know a doctor's office. We'll take him there. She is very wise. Now go! Stop him! Block his path! Is there some emergency? I have a house call to make. Office hours don't begin for another hour. Go inside, all of you. I say, what is this? He's holding a gun on us, Dr. Brandt. We had to bring him here. He wants bullets removed. I see. I'm afraid I cannot be of any help. You will need hospital facilities for anything else. Be silent and get inside. You will remove the pellets here, now. Leave these people alone, Thor. Where is our ship? I will take you there. No, it is gone. Do as I say. Derek, please. Doctor, you must try. lie down here. I will prepare an anesthetic. The pain will be great. I will not be drugged. You will simply remove the pellets. Both of you, sit there. I shall keep you covered. Take heed. One treacherous move and they pay with their lives. Now proceed. you have been searching for me. It must have been important for you to have... The Gargana to be raised here. You could not be allowed to run free. But the specimen reaction was negative. It was verified positive after you escaped. The captain should have let me kill you when I had a chance. And why didn't he? I saw him stop you when you fired at me. Because... Because he just learned that... You are the son of our leader. to be killed. Why did you fire at me in the city? Your life or death was put in my hands. A traitor does not deserve to be our next leader. The only reason you do not fire now is to force attention to your wounds. When that is done... Proceed! And to 
antiseptic must be applied to your wounds, and you will need bandages. I'll get them. Baby, strange vibrations from the void. Outer space aliens? No, Zelda, the male, the male oh, is the in. The male is in, and wow, it is way in. And look at this cool graphic. Wow, thank you, Sean Baker. This is a great card, and, and, and it reads, uh, Dear Hepcats, I'm writing to you to declare my eternal admiration for offbeat cinema. I've been a loyal viewer dating all the way back to your crazy first episode. As a kid, the show opened up this whole new world for me, and I credit you cats for my love for cult cinema, silent movies, and manic monster matches. The, sh the show and you are far out sky watchers, and I am so fortunate to have been able to stay in touch with you. I'm wondering if you could show on air the Silent Oz movies, produced by L. Frank Baum himself. Anyway, cats, thanks for all the great memories and wild late night kicks, Sean Baker. What a fabulous note. Thank you, Sean, for writing to us, and thank you for, wow, hanging with us for so many years. A amen, Sean. And, and here's another homage to late night from uh, our friend Richard Schmidt, and he writes, uh, well, I've deeply enjoyed watching Offbeat Cinema's film selection. This past weekend, I began to feel a void in my gut, a void no PB&J or Mighty Taco could fill. So I decided to look up Fritz the Night Owl, who kept us entertained as kids on Friday nights with Double Chiller Theater on WBNS in Columbus, Ohio. Fritz was and still is a late night legend for all those who remember him. I found a YouTube clip that had a recording of several of his double chiller theater clips, and there he was, exactly what I and many may need, slime. Perfectly, preferably green slime, and for those who truly appreciate it, there's no better than green slime encountered in outer space in the late 1960s, which is more than just slime, but slime as it defines the alien race. I believe the green slime from 1968 may just fill that void and I think many others may be feeling the same. Well that was a long long road to go just to make a film request Richard but very <laughs> very poetic I must say. So kind of slimy. <laughs> well it's kind of slipping out of my hands here while I'm reading it but still Richard we're gonna take a look for green slime and see if we can put that on a future episode. But we dig everything you send us, cats, and in fact, send us some, some snail mail like this beautiful postcard, or just put a letter in an envelope and send it to the address on the screen so we can read some of your, your fans, your, your homages, and even your thinly veiled cries for help. And cats, if you're very social online, Check us out on Facebook, like us, and follow us on Twitter. We're there for you, and we love to hear from you. And you can see some of our episodes now streaming internet-like on offbeatcinema.tv, and you'll find lots of other cool stuff on that website as well. Now back to the flick. Dig it. The man guilty of these strange killings now lies mute in confinement at General Hospital where he is being treated for minor injuries. Authorities plan to transfer him to city jail tonight. The fantastic murder weapon he used has not been located. Mystery still surrounds the disappearance of a man-eating beast said to have been in an abandoned mine shaft outside the city limits. These newsreel shots were made immediately after the city police surrounded the cave and found it completely empty. Evidence in the cave appeared to confirm the report that a monster of some sort had been shackled there 
but had somehow attained strength enough to pull itself loose and escape. Groups of armed volunteers have set out in search of the creature, hoping to track it down and destroy it. Meanwhile, Thor crashed just below here. If that disintegrator is down there, I'm going to find it. Terry, I just thought. The monster that escaped from the cave. It must have been there at the same time we were. What I can't figure out is... Why did it escape when it did? Why not sooner? It would not have been large enough, but the man it consumed increased its growth rate. Then... How big would it be now? There is no telling. You stay here. Keep the door closed. Go back, it's too dangerous for you. We can find to... that thing twice as fast if we both look. You make me angry, but I like you very much. In a moment, the moon will come from behind a cloud. It'll be easier to see what we're looking for. Yes. The light from your moon, it will help. My moon? You're not from this world, are you? I did not know how to tell you. It seems impossible to believe. You're so much like us. Like my brother, Grandpa, when he was young. And to think. We were made the same. The only difference is that we were put on places far, far apart. What is it like where you're from? Babies are bred and raised like livestock, parented by the most perfect specimens of our race. If you become ill, you are put to death, as are the old. You won't be going back ever, will you? I shall make the earth my home, and I shall never, never leave it. What is Terrapin Station? Well, it's for the living and the dead. It's a unique boutique for the normal and the not-so-normal. Terrapin Station, Buffalo's most exciting specialty shop, offers you candles, imported clothing, jewelry, books, posters, music, and more. 
So stop in and say hi at Terrapin, Terrapin Station, Station, 1172 Pearl. So stop in and say hi. Poster art. New, old, and rare posters. Art postcards, custom framing, and more. 1055 Elmwood Avenue. Looking for a certain poster? Call us or go to posterartusa.com. I'm Tori Spelling. As a wife, mother, actress, it is tough finding balance, but I did find clarity with Psychic Source. A reading from one of their advisors gives me an unbiased perspective on everything. With hundreds of carefully screened advisors, you choose the one that's right for you. My hope is that when we hang up, that you'll have a peace and an understanding that you didn't have before. Call now for your special introductory rate of 75 cents per minute by phone or chat. The best psychics are waiting to help you find answers and insights 24-7. And if you're not completely satisfied, your reading is free. Why not empower yourself with the possibilities in your life? Call 1-800-574-6281 now. That's 1-800-574-6281 for your special rate of 75 cents per minute. Psychic Source, life's possibilities revealed. Call 1-800-574-6281 now for your special rate of 75 cents per minute. behind the cloud. Derek. The cricket. It's so quiet. The garden, get back! There it is, Derek! It was under the rock! Quick! Shoot it, Derek! Shoot it! It won't work! Run! Go start the motor! Hurry! damaged somehow when Thor was thrown in the crash. You said that that thing would keep growing. If it does, what can stop it from wrecking the city? And I may be able to repair the damaged part of the disintegrator. If I can, we will stop the Gargan and give the Earth a weapon against invasion as well. If only I can get it to work. Only a coyote. Whether it's cold or whether it's hot, he tends his traps whether or not. Yes, sir. The lobster fisherman hasn't time to worry much about the weather. In come the orders, and out go the lobsters. But that's getting a little ahead of the story. Up and down the rugged New England coast, most any morning, summer or winter, you'll find hundreds of lobster fishermen like this one, cruising across the inlets and shallow bays, pulling in their traps. While the lobster is known as one of the world's greatest food delicacies, he is also famous for being just about the world's dumbest creature. So dumb, in fact, that he could easily get out of the trap if he had sense enough to turn around and go out the way he came in. But he doesn't. And this is the beginning of the end. The claws are plugged with wooden pegs. And from now on, 
He's as harmless as a kitten. Bait is not expensive, for a lobster is as curious as he is dumb. And a piece of red flannel is often sufficient to entice him into the trap. With the traps all neatly deposited on the bottom of the bay again, waiting for more customers, the lobster fisherman homeward plods his weary way. But now the lobster tries to get even. He demands cool, damp moss in which to live. And he refuses to live long if he doesn't get it. So, speedy transportation to the packing house is an absolute necessity. And many a truck like this one can be seen along New England highways, giving very special delivery service to his knobs, the lobster. At the packing house, he is speedily transferred to barrels of moss and ice to be rushed sometimes a thousand miles inland, where he will arrive still alive and kicking. He may be dumb, but as the main course for a delicious dinner, he's the tops. in the station 86, out by the hills, due northeast. There's some kind of a monster. It suddenly bobbed up and seemed to touch the sky. I have not been drinking. No, I can't see it now. It must be behind the hills, but I'm getting out of here. The few remaining survivors of the search party that was attacked report that the beast they encountered was many times the size they expected, indicating that the monster has some strange power of rapid growth. An exact description was we have a bulletin just received. According to a report not yet confirmed, a beast of seemingly gigantic proportions has been sighted lurking in the hills due northeast of town. City officials have called for military help. Planes and troops are expected to arrive within the next two hours. Meanwhile, citizens should take refuge in places of safety. Cellars, bomb shelters, as directed by civil defense administrators. I repeat. Jerry, they say it's coming. It has grown. It's just northeast of town. I'd better wake up Grandpa. We'll all go down to the cellar. You go there with him. There is a chance I can do something yet. What? What are you looking at? Those wires. Going from pole to pole. They carry the source of energy used for illumination and power in the homes. Yes, electricity. And the wires are spread throughout the city, are they not? You mean you might be able to make the disintegrator work by hooking it to... Possibly. If the power were great enough, the only chance, so I've got to try it. I can help, Derek. I'm going with you. Oh, uh, what's going on? Uh, what's all the commotion about? Grandpa, Derek and I are going out to the edge of town. Wait for us here. First, I must put the disintegrator back together, and then find proper tools. I can load the car with every tool we have in the garage. All right, then. Let us go. Gramps with Betty. What makes you think Betty's in the cellar? She's out somewhere with Derek again. Everybody's supposed to take shelter. The monster from the cave, it's approaching the town. Huh? Then that's where they must have gone, those crazy kids. Joe, we've got to try and find them. You mean they... Come on, then, let's go.
I'm at North Ridge Road. We have a weapon here that might be able to stop it if we can connect it to the power lines. Who is this? I'll have to check with... You have to believe me. There's no time to check with anybody. Out there. That looks like them. Derek is climbing down a pole. And look what's coming. We're not going to make it in time. We've got the power and it's ready. Hello? Turn the power back on. Okay. It is not enough. It is not enough power. Can you boost the power any? Please, it's not enough. I'll try to speed up the generators. Derek seems to have some kind of weapon, but it's not doing anything. Ah! If only there were more power, Betty. Is there any way to generate more power? We've got to have more. I can join in more circuits, but it may blow off the line. Try anything. It's our only chance. <laughs> too late. You mean they're coming? Already? Your people are here for you. I must leave. They will take care of you. But, Derek, you promised. You said... I know what I must do. You must not interfere. Betty, thank heaven you're all right. That book has indeed made you forget many things. We are the supreme race. We have the supreme weapons. Somehow I feel that I've always known you. But we've never been apart. You are the son of our leader. You won't be going back ever. Will you? How did he get a weapon like that? It makes me think of what the killer used. It is. The same thing. But who is he? Where did he come from, anyway? In some place none of us has ever heard of before, Joe. What do you mean? Clear from another planet. Far out in space. Hey, wait a minute. Betty, this is no time to be joking. I'm not joking. Where do you think the monster came from? And the man who was doing all the killing and, and the unheard of weapon he used? But how did they... They came in a, a spaceship of some sort. Whatever those people told you they saw last night. The flying saucer? And I thought those people were seeing things. They weren't. Derek looked into the sky just before he left here. Somehow... He could tell more on the way. Howdy do, off-piece cinema viewers. I'm Hal of Hal's Gorgon Hut, Route 5 and Banger. Martha and I want to make a special offer to you, off-beat cinema viewers. If you've got a Gorgon terrorizing your neighborhood, you call us. We'll come to your neighborhood, we'll stun it, we'll bag it, we'll bring it back and boil it, and we'll split the profits with you 50-50. You won't find a better 800-pound Gorgon than the ones at Hal's Gorgon Hut. Remember, Offbeat Cinema viewers, it's a special for you only. Come on down. Vincent Price, and you're invited to my party in the house on Haunted Hill, 
where so far the ghosts have murdered only seven people. So won't you come and make it eight? You'll see human heads without bodies. Ah! Mysterious pools of blood dripping from the ceiling. The walls move slowly in against you. Don't try to escape, you can't. are waiting, so won't you join me in the house on Haunted Hill? Hooray. Or you'll be late for your own funeral. What is Terrapin Station? Well, it's for the living and the dead. It's a unique boutique for the normal and the not so normal. Terrapin Station, Buffalo's most exciting specialty shop, offers you candles, imported clothing, jewelry, books, posters, music, and more. So stop in and say hi at Terrapin Station, 1172 Burr. So stop in and say hi. Attention women, recent reports have linked the use of talcum powder with an increased risk of ovarian cancer. Studies have shown that talc particles can travel up the reproductive system and attach to the ovaries, which could cause ovarian cancer. Talc is a mineral that when used as a powder absorbs moisture and minimizes friction. Many women have used talc in the forms of shower to shower or other body powders. If you or a loved one have used talcum powder and were diagnosed with ovarian cancer, you may be entitled to financial compensation and medical expenses. Call the Relyon Group right now to be connected with an experienced attorney for a free consultation. There is no risk on your part and you don't owe us a penny unless we are successful. Do not delay. There are time deadlines to file a claim. If you or a loved one were diagnosed with ovarian cancer after using talcum powder, Call the Rely On Group at 800-906-0352. That's 800-906-0352. take me somewhere in your vehicle. What makes you think I will? You refuse to take me? That's right. I'm staying right here. You will do as I say. Oh, no, Derek, this isn't you. Do not interfere, Betty. I beg you. Get in. Take me to where they are keeping the prisoner. The killer? He's at General Hospital, but... Then take me there. 
John Dawes with his son and Greta Rick won't. Betty. Trust me, Betty. Trust me. Derek seemed like such a nice fellow. Grandpa, he promised me something. He promised he would never leave, that he would never go back. I don't believe he wants to break his promise to me. I'm not going to let him. What can you do about it, honey? I think I know where he's going. Out by the old mine. I want to go there. I want to see him once more. He's hurt you enough, Betty. Grandpa, please let me go. I must. The prisoner is in this building. It looks like they haven't transferred him to city jail yet. What are you planning to do? Never mind. Just get out of the car and walk in front of me. Do not move. I will take the prisoner. Get their guns. Hand them to me. Now get in. You face the wall. Keep your hands above your heads. I was stupid, Thor. Very stupid. But that is over. We are returning to meet the ships. Together. Why do you let them live? Kill them! There is no need. They will be dead soon enough. Along with everything else on this planet. Go! Look! That's what he meant! of an alien source are approaching from the sky. Radio contact has been attempted but cannot be established. Instructions are to prepare for an attack by an unknown enemy. Concern yourself with them. Destroy them. Why, Thor? They cannot change what is going to happen. What is going to happen, Derek? You must understand. Death must come to all. Sooner to some, later to others. The guide ship is about to land. We must go to meet it. Your promise, Derek. Don't you remember your promise? I have not forgotten it. We call that the guide ship. And it looks like there are a hundred more still in the sky. What are they going to do? Derek told me. The other ships are loaded with thousands of those horrible creatures, like the one Derek killed today. Why are they bringing them here? To raise 
for food, a safe distance from their own people. And they don't care what happens to us? Derry cared. He wanted to make the Earth his home. He promised he would never leave. <laughs> oh, Joe! <laughs> I would have used the disintegrator on them, but it will not function without energy supply. It was damaged when you crashed. I had to bluff with it. It is just as well. They will be the first victims of the Gargan herds. So you were able to bring him back, Thor. He brought me. I'm sorry, I acted the way I did. I am ready to take my punishment. There will be no punishment, my son. You are my father? I am. I have watched your progress since you were born. You have excelled in all things. I was most disappointed to learn that you were deserted. I came this trip hoping I would find you had returned. Has what I have done not disqualified me? Am I still to... You are back. That is all that matters. Your mistakes were made because of that book. It blurred your mind, but only temporarily. How is it you are able to leave the planet? Will not the government structure collapse in your absence? We will return immediately, as soon as the Gargans are unloaded from the fleet of ships. The people are unaware that I am gone. Yes, we must leave quickly. If your absence were discovered, it would likely spark the beginning of a revolution. I am not the only one who had that book, Father. Yes, I know. And you will help in tracking down others who may have such books. Yes, I... I see the fleet is approaching. They are flying from radio signals from the guide ship, are they not? Let me be the one to direct them in for landing. Captain, are the ships close enough to receive the landing signals? Momentarily, but... Then go below, Derek. You will bring them in. They're getting mighty close. Derek has some plan. He's not doing what they want him to, I'm sure. Master control to fleet. Master control to fleet. Increase speed. Set flight pattern to minus point zero eight. Increase speed. Open this hatch at once. The ships seem to be converging and increasing their speed. They cannot land. He doesn't plan to have them land, but crash. They're coming right at us. Derek's doing it. That's what he planned! But he's inside there! He'll be killed, too! Get down inside the cave! Please think of what you are doing! Turn the ships around before it is too late! Hold, course, steady.
Oh man, oh man. Does it get any more far out than that? I think not. I think not. Agreed, agreed. That was some <laughs> serious offbeat cinema sci-fi fun. Yeah, you know, this movie could never be remade any better than it already is. It's a classic. Nah, the Hollywood big boys could try it. I wouldn't oh, put oh, anything please, past please. them. Don't get them started on the Hollywood big boys. But I could go for a chilled gorgon salad with maybe a dozen shrimp and a big pile of lemon wedges <laughs> right now. <laughs> but remember, like Hale said, you got to go for the young ones. The hundred pounders, he said. They're the most tender. And on that note, we'll say good night and thank you for joining us on Offbeat Cinema, where the coffee is always hot and the movies are so cool. And if you are within the sound of our voices, we implore you keep watching the skies. And now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.